Good afternoon. This is the Chapter 13, Chem 122, Spring 2021 quiz. I'd like to go over these. First one, consider the reaction X creating Y and Z. We define the rate of reaction is equal to rate, equal to some rate constant K. Okay. Rate is equal to some rate constant K times the concentration of our reactants raised to some power. Since the coefficient there is implied to be one, <coughs> we write it that way. So the answer here is rate is equal to K, rate constant K times the concentration of X raised to the first power. This is a possible rate law. Number two. A flask is charged with 0.124 moles of A and allowed to react to form B according to this reaction, A going to B. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. The following reaction is the data as how A changes with time. The average rate of disappearance of A between 10 and 20 seconds is. So the rate of reaction for this reaction, we're defining in rate, is equal to minus one times the change of concentration of A over change in time. So the average rate of disappearance between 10 and 20 seconds, if we're looking at time, this is our T1, then there's our T2. Delta T is T1 minus T2. Our change in concentration is the concentration of A at 20 seconds minus the concentration of A at 10. So time, 20, minus 10, then our change in concentration is, what is the concentration at 20 seconds, 0 0.088, minus the concentration at 10 seconds, 0 0.110. So we do our math, the answer comes out to be 2.2 times 10 to the minus three. Number three. Reaction for which A and B react to form C, the following addition, the following reactions, follow, excuse me, following rate details were obtained. So we have A and B reacting to form C. We have the concentration of A at 0 0.10, the react concentration of B at 0 0.10, we have the rate of 1. For the, react, for the reaction where A is 0 0.10, B is 0 0.2, we have the reaction rate of 4. For the, re, for the rate of reaction where A is 0 0.2 and B is 0.2, the reaction rate is 8. So it asks us to identify what is the rate law. The general rate law expression is rate constant K times the concentration of reactants A and B raised some exponential power, X and Y. So now what we have to do is called the method of initial rates. We have to express the ratio of this, if we label this one, two, and three, we take the rate of reaction three divided by uh, the rate of reaction two. So that is equal to four, three, two. So that is equal to eight over four, but the rate of the reaction is equal to the rate constant K times the concentration of A raised to the X divided by the concentration of B raised to the Y. Well, in rate, the third situation, our concentration of A is 0 0.2. Concentration of B, 0 0.2. Compared to rate 2, concentration of A, 0 0.1. Concentration of B is 0 0.2, raised to the Y. We can see that the values of K are the same, so they will cancel one another out. The concentrations of B 
B, point two and point two, they will factor one another out. So we essentially have the rate of the reaction is equal to the concentration of A in rate three divided by the concentration of A in the rate of reaction two, both raised to some exponent. So eight divided by four is two. By the power or by the conventions that exponents exist at, we can take A, the concentration of X for the third case, that's 0 0.2 divided by A for the concentration in the second case, that's 0 0.1. Since these are both raised to the X power, we can raise that to the X power. So 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.1 is two. So we have two raised to some power x is two, two raised to the first power. So x here is to the first power. So the rate equation is rate is equal to some rate constant k times the concentration of a to the first power. Now we need to do that same comparison between <coughs> these data sets where in this previous three to two, A was changed, B was held constant. Now we need to hold A constant and change B and see how that changes the rate. So we're comparing rate two to rate one. So in two and one, concentration of A is still point one, is both 0 0.10. So the concentration doesn't change. What we change is the concentration of B. So again, we start out with the same general rate equation. Rate is equal to K times A raised to the first power times B raised to the Y. Well, if we're comparing rate two to rate one, that is equal to the rate constant K times A raised to the first power times B raised to the Y power. The rate for the second reaction is four. Rate for the first reaction is one is equal to the rate constant K. A for the second reaction is 0.1 times B concentration is 0 0.2 divided by the rate of the reaction for the first set rate constant K times 0 0.1 times B raised to the Y. Well, again, the rate constant K's cancel, the point ones cancel. So you're left with four divided by one, which is four is equal to 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.1 raised to why? So 0.2 divided by 0.1 is 2. 4 is equal to 2 raised to the y power. What's y equal to? It's equal to the square. It's the second power. So the exponent for b is 2. Therefore, the rate expression for this reactant is the rate constant k times a to the first times b squared. Number four. The reaction of 2HI to produce H2 and I2 is second order, which will give a linear plot. Here it is one over the concentration of HI versus time. That is something you will have to remember. Number five. As the temperature of a reaction is increased, the rate of reaction increases because the reactive molecules can collide more frequency and with a greater energy per collision because they have more energy, therefore they will have sufficient activation energy to get over the barrier for the energy of activation for the reaction to occur. So as we heat up the reaction, 
the rate of reaction increases because more molecules have that minimum energy of activation that's necessary for the reaction to occur. Number six, the half-life for a first-order reaction is 27 minutes. How long will it take for four half-lives to occur? <coughs> half-order, the rate for the half-life for a first-order reaction is 27 minutes. How long is for the first order? The half-life for the first order is 27 minutes. How long will it take for half-lives to occur? Well, if the first half-life takes 20, 27 minutes, the second half-life also takes 27 minutes. The third half-life takes 27 minutes. The fourth half-life takes 27 minutes. So it is 27 times four. Seven times four is 28, carrier two. Four times two is eight. One is 10, 108 minutes. Number seven, in the Arrhenius equation, the value, we have K, which is the rate constant, is equal to some factor A times the mathematical operation of E to the minus energy of activation divided by RT. The frequency factor is the term A. The frequency factor is how often do molecules collide with one another with the right energy and with the right orientation such that the reaction can occur. Number eight, determine the molecularity of the following elementary reaction step. It is unimolecular because we only have one reactant. Therefore, that makes it a unimolecular process. Number nine, for the elementary reaction, the molecularity of the elementary reaction is, since we have two reactants, it is a bimolecular reaction. The rate that this elementary reaction is, rate is equal to some rate constant K, times the concentration of NO3 times the concentration of CO. Please remember that in these elementary reaction steps, the coefficients in front of the reactants are the exponents in the rate equation. Since the coefficient is one here and one there, the, co the exponents here are one there and one there. If this coefficient was two, then the rate equation would involve a square as, a, as the exponent. And number 10, the decomposition of ozone can occur or is thought to occur or is proposed to occur through this process. First step is O3 breaks down to O2 and O. Then two O3s come together react with an O to give two oxygens, two O2s. Of these processes, step one and step two, both of those are elementary reaction steps. Therefore, things that are produced in one reaction step that are consumed in a subsequent reaction, elementary reaction step, are considered to be reaction intermediates. So O3 reacts and decomposes to O2 and O. In a subsequent step, another O3 comes in, reacts with the oxygen that was produced in a previous step, and produces O2. Since our oxygen is produced in one step, but consumed in a subsequent step, oxygen here is considered to be a reaction intermediate. It appears in a earlier elementary step, may not necessarily be the first, but in this case, it appears in the first, and it's consumed in a sequential step. Since there's only two steps in this particular reaction, it's, consumed, it's produced in the first and consumed in the second. That's the Chapter 13 quiz. If you have any other questions, please make an appointment to come see me in my office during office hours so you can get an explanation to satisfy your question. Thank you very much. Have a good day.